every one of them that goes out there, and they are going to be drawing to you what, what it is you put out there. So if you're looking to draw more wealth, more success, magnetize money, you will have to start thinking very, very um, pro-money, wealth, success in a really positive light and watch them both on a, a conscious and, a, and an unconscious basis. Is that basically one of the action steps they can take, Carla? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I, um, I love to go into that a little more uh, in one of the modules. The fifth module is, is all about that. And How I many modules are we doing tonight? We're we, have, we, have 15, do, we have 15 we're minutes only, here still. Yeah, we're only going to do about two. Like that, that's, we're going to skip a little, so we're going to do this one on focus. Okay. And the one on uh, on what you're talking about, happiness fulfills, it's called, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because I realize that there's just so much material that I like to cover, you know. Yeah. And it and it's difficult to do all that and give everyone what what. Well, they if can people use. can get you know two or three real key simple. Uh, points and actions with them, that's enough. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. right now, if you can do one thing that will improve it, that's even great. Mm -hmm. So let's so, do some okay. powerful pieces here. Yeah, so what, what I was saying is that you're the channel through which it flows, of course. It's not going to get any more abundant than you're thinking about yourself or you're thinking about money itself. As Harv said, you have to start changing your thoughts about that, of course. Because if you've got thoughts like, if I have lots of money, people won't like me, or that money's evil, you're going to keep yourself unconscious. And in order to bring those riches to you that you want, you have to become money conscious. But if you've got those limiting thoughts, your subconscious self is not going to want to go that direction because it's too painful. So you can see how awareness is so important to creating prosperity because you've got to see what those hidden beliefs about money and wealth are. And you have to be aware that you create your experience with money. However, most people say, you know, oh, you create your reality. But until you get that into your physiology, until you get that into that part of yourself, what we call the coup, the subconscious part of yourself, until that part of you changes that energy pattern to a new vibration, you're not going to see your reality change and you're not going to be able to create your experience the way you want to create it. It doesn't matter it, all kinds of strategies for wealth building if you don't have the inner patterns to support it because you either won't be able to achieve it if you don't have those inner patterns or you'll get it and lose it or you'll have it and you won't enjoy it. And that's why it's so important, you know, when we do a 28-day formula, we use breath, energy, sound, movement, focus, repetition, all those things that the subconscious needs to take on that new pattern. So just to summarize that first module, you know, to experience more prosperity in your life, you've got to improve your thinking. However, you have got to improve your conscious and subconscious thinking. And you've got to be aware and remember that abundance is a vibration, an energy pattern. And that's what it is. It's an energy pattern. And the second module says that all energy patterns can be changed. In the second module, we say releasing liberates. So you can choose the freedom from those old thought patterns and you can, you can change by releasing them and replacing them with new ones. We see that all the time, you know, with athletes who use their guided visualizations to have superior performance. Well, so they're releasing an old pattern and replacing it with a new one in their mind before it actually happens. So that's, you know, we're, <laughs> we're going through that quite quickly, but I wanted to get you to the third module, which is so important, and that is attention energizes. The third module, Attention Energizes, is really important because it says that your focus of attention generates a current between you and wherever you put your attention. So I'm going to ask you to just do a little exercise with me right now. It's going to illustrate what I'm talking about. You can, if you have, you know, one hand free, that's perfect. So what you want to do is you want to put out your free hand with your palm up in front of you. I want you to relax your shoulder, relax your hand, but just put your hand up so that you can see the lines on your palm. And just for a moment, I want you to observe the size and the shape of your hand and the color of your skin. And now I want you to see all the lines on the palm of your hand. Focus your attention there as if you were a master palmist and you could read these lines.
or you could draw them on a separate piece of paper for me, showing all the lines. Okay, now I want you to imagine that there is a dial on your palm and it measures the intensity of your concentration. That dial only goes up to seven. And you're at about three right now. So I want you to move that dial up to four. Feel how the intensity of your concentration increases. Move it up to five. Move it up to six and feel your concentration increasing. Move it up to seven, highest number on the dial. Feel that strong focus of attention for a few more moments. Okay, now I want you to, maybe you have to cradle your telephone in your ear for a moment. I want you to bring your other hand out. And I want you to look at those two hands. I want you to see what's different between the hand that you were focusing on and the other hand. Is there something that's different in the way that it looks or the way that it feels? And what about uh, you, Gail and Harv? Were you able to see a difference? Oh, there's a total difference in the sh where the lines are for sure. Oh, the lines changed? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Now, did your hand change? Did it change and get mine actually is, pl is plumper? You know, it looks a little bigger. Did you get any feeling of um, heat or tingling or anything? Oh, there's tingling in the fingers. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and Harv, did you get some of that? Yeah, one is a little bit uh, darker than the other. Yeah. So, okay, just shake all that out. Just shake your neck and your hands, your arms and everything. And what you just experienced, this little exercise was to show you that, uh, that what happened was a biological flow of energy moved along a path to your palm, which was the object of your attention. So attention energizes. Your focus of attention generates a current between you and wherever you put your attention. And, of course, the sharper the focus, the stronger the current. And if you sustain that focused attention, it channels the energy of the universe into manifesting the equivalent of what you're focusing on. So, of course, in other words, you get what you concentrate on. And if that's so, then if you know that your physical, your emotional, your spiritual energy flows in the direction of your, of your focus, then doesn't it make sense to focus on what you want and not what you don't want? But how many times... Have we said things or thought over and over, I never have enough money, I never have enough money, or I can't afford that? Where does the current of energy go? Away from your prosperity. Yeah, it goes not only away from your prosperity, but into manifesting that idea. Mm -hmm. It reinforces it and brings it as a reality into your life. Mm -hmm. So as Harvey was saying, you want to stop thinking and talking about lack. You want to focus on prosperity. You especially want to... Stop focusing on criticizing other people for having lots of money because that's not going to create the money you want in your own life. And then also, you know, you heard me talking about some underlying limiting ideas that, about money that I had discovered and this woman discovered. Well, in some form or another, if you have um, a limiting idea, you have been focusing attention on that idea, and it may have been a focus of your subconscious mind. Whatever you came up with about, well, gee, I, I have this idea about money. Your subconscious mind has been focusing attention there, and you may not have been consciously aware of it. And so it's feeding energy to that idea. Now what you can do is you have a choice. You have a choice to feed energy to a more expansive idea that you come up with. And that's very, very important. And what I'm going to do is, because it's, it's so obvious, you know, that there's, that there's little time to do everything, but I do want you to have at least one tool, again, that you can walk away with about focus. Um, I'm going to give you something, a very simple tool, that can really help you just to keep your attention on a positive focus. When you, get, when you find yourself focusing on what we call stuff, which is stresses, doubts, unhappiness, or fears, I want you to just think of the word cancel. It's a circle with a line through it. Imagine a cancel sign. 
And then you're going to EWOP it, E-W-O-P, EWOP it. And that stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for everything's working out perfectly. Everything's working out perfectly. You tell yourself that you can stop worrying because everything's working out perfectly and you don't even have to know how. And this is an opportunity to trust your super conscious self, your high self, to bring about that desired event in the best possible way. I have had so many wonderful results from this technique, and so many students have too. And so what I want you to do is just a simple one with me now. I'm going to take you through this EWAP exercise, and you'll be able to use this in the future when something comes up. Maybe you just need to get on a plane, and they're all sold out, and they're paying people to to get off the plane, and you're e wopping it. That's happened to me over and over again, and then they'll come and give me a seat in the cockpit or something. So you can use it in all kinds of situations. So what I want you to do right now is just think about something in your life with which you have some kind of concern. You just think of that. And then decide that you're going to turn this situation over to your high self, your high self is that part of you that most directly knows God, that most directly knows universal intelligence. You're going to turn that situation over to your high self to handle the details. And you can even say to yourself or, or aloud, you know, high self, I'm turning this over to you. Take care of this in the best possible way. And so this is, how, this is what we're going to do. We're going to add some, some focus and some breath to this EWAP exercise too. So just close your eyes just for a moment. And this time, I want you to inhale with your attention at the center of the earth and exhale with your attention at the heavens. So just begin to do that. Inhale with your attention at the center of the earth and exhale with your attention at the heavens. And now with each exhalation, what I'd like you to do is imagine that any problem or challenge or difficult emotion is being released to your high self. You're turning it over. Just allow yourself to let it go. So inhaling at the center of the earth, exhaling to the heavens and letting go of that, saying, high self, you take care of this for my highest good, letting it go. And then begin to expect that the best outcome's already happening and have confidence that everything's working out perfectly. Right now you can just settle back and trust that everything's turning out beautifully. And then just take a deep breath and open your eyes. And what this does is this helps you to remain in a, a calm and clear state of positive expectation a lot more of the time. And that's very, very important. How did that feel? It felt good. It's um, obviously one of the things that that we work on in our in our programs, especially around the warrior camp and the wizard, and uh, certainly there's the whole idea of, of, of having faith in your higher self. See, mm -hmm. we, you know, the, the distinction there, Kala, is really important that you made, which is that, you know, our lower self, our little me, our ego mind is so frickin' limited. That, and, and, and what we do is then we have a problem that basically it created out of, its, out of the way it's been thinking and, um, and being, and then we try to solve that problem with that same mind. As I mm -hmm. said, so many times you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. Mm -hmm. And what this allows people to do, and not just in the money realm, but every realm, decisions and challenges is in any stress and anything that you're trying to control and, you know, it's not going your way and all that kind of stuff is to be able to release that to your higher self. And, I, and the comment I do want to make is really important. That's where the wizard comes in, the training that we're doing this summer, is that the, once you've accepted, though, what, what is and you, and you release it, uh, you know, you want to expect the best. At the same time, you cannot be emotionally attached to it mm -hmm. because that puts up blocks, doesn't it, Colin? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, sure, if you're going to put emotion behind it that has maybe some fear or doubt about it actually happening, 
that's, you know, that's a certain kind of focus there. And that's usually what people do. They say, okay, I'll turn it over. But, boy, if you don't get this to me in the next day or two, I'm going to flip out again. You know, that type of thing. And it's coming from need instead of trust. Exactly. And and what you you need is, is a scarcity consciousness. Right, and that is so important. That I think that's a big word for tonight is to really trust. Trust in your higher self. Mm-hmm. You can trust in that, in the you know higher power in in some format. But you gotta, you have a part of you that is connected to that higher power of the universe, that the most magnificent part of the universe, and that is inside each and every one of us. And that's the part of you that has the inner wisdom, and you can tap right into that. By, but first, you have to say, hey, you know, take over. I'm willing to give this issue to you. Versus trying to figure it all out. Right. Great. Right. I'm glad you, yeah. Well, okay, we don't have much longer. We okay. have one more module to cover here. Well, maybe I'll just uh, summarize, okay? I yeah. would like to do one little thing with the, the, that kind of helps with the, the hand, but let's see if we can do it. First of all, I want to summarize, okay, with the first one we were saying, the first module we were saying that awareness is really important. With the second module, it's freedom, release those old patterns. And with the third one, it's focus. And what I said is, in the first one, abundance is a vibration. It's an energy pattern. In the second one, all energy patterns can be changed. And in the third one, changing focus changes patterns. That's important. So now, the fifth one, which we really won't be able to go through, what it says is that abundance is reinforcing happy, loving patterns. But I may be able to just quickly, you think we have a moment we can do the little hand one, Harv? Where people can put their hand on Well, I, yeah, whatever it is, if something is, is, as long as they can use it, I mean, something is very well, specific they it, can start doing. I think it makes a difference just to, to experience it, you know? If people experience it, it's, it's a good thing. Because Great. What, the, what the fifth module says is that happiness fulfills, that you can choose consciously to be happy with the good in your life, and then when you do that, through that focus, your blessings are going to increase. And it's very, very important. Uh, it has a practical aspect to it, we say that one of the most effective ways to increase happiness is found in in blessing or complimenting or noticing, admiring, appreciating the good. And Harv was saying something about, well, when you find yourself criticizing other people, then guess what happens? So I'm going to ask you to do, it's funny because we can't do a muscle check in which you can see me doing it, but you can do your own by simply putting your hand down on uh, the if you're by a bed or if you're by a dresser or if you have a book in front of you, you can just put your hand down and you're spreading out your fingers. And that's you know, palm down, right? Yeah, palm down on something that's sturdy. And now it's possible through muscle checking to show you how your relationship to money affects you. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. You have to be very aware, though, uh, by seeing how it feels, if there's any little resistances, the very subtle feelings. So your index finger, I'm going to ask you to say out loud, I hate money, and then you're going to just lift your index finger, but only lift it as far as it feels comfortable. So let's all say that together. I hate money, and then lift that finger. Okay, good. Now you notice where it goes, and then put it down. All right? Now, what you're going to do now is you're going to say, I love money, and then you're going to lift it again. So I'll say it together. I love money, and put that finger up, and notice where it goes this time. Yeah, for me it was like twice as high. Twice as high. How about you, Gail? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Easier, yep. Yeah, now some, for those of you on the line that it didn't work for you that way, that's okay because sometimes muscle checking doesn't work if you're dehydrated. <laughs> But what most of you would probably see is that when you go ahead and you criticize something as inanimate as money, you actually weaken yourself because the muscles of your finger would not go up as high. But when you go, when you go ahead and you praise and say, I love money, what happens is you strengthen yourself. The finger went up much higher. And the reason that happens is because the subconscious part of ourselves takes everything personally. It believes right down to the DNA that it's connected with everything. And when you criticize something, even money, what it does is it pulls, it feels under attack and pulls its energy in. And then you don't have the strength with which you need to manifest your dreams. So when you start finding yourself criticizing money or the government, the IRS, or yourself, what you're doing is is weakening yourself for your future manifestations. So I think that's a good place maybe to, to stop, Harv, do you think? Well, I just think that was a great point right there. Um, you know, the, rec- the, the uh, I, I'm thinking that you're talking about projection here, basically, whereby your subconscious, uh, since it is, 
it, it does have the truth about what the universe is all about and that everything is connected so that when you are basically um, uh, negating or judging or criticizing mm -hmm. or talking ill of anything or anyone else, mm -hmm. uh, it as you said, it takes it personally, mm -hmm. meaning that you're doing that to yourself, which means it's, it's, everything is totally a mirror. So mm -hmm. you're weakening yourself in all ways as soon as you judge or criticize another. Absolutely. And that includes, uh, and that includes uh, um, uh, inanimate and animate objects. So that includes money or anything else. That's right. It sure does. And, you know, there's an, uh, there's an old Irish saying that says, money made a vow that whoever should not love her should not have her. <laughs> 